So the Golden State Warriors are pretty damn awesome. They won a championship, they won 73 games this season, and there's a decent chance they're going to win another one against the Cavaliers. And of course, Steph Curry plays a big role in this, but it's really the collective unit of Golden State that allows them to be so great. I mean, Klay Thompson, great shooter, as well as a fantastic defensive player. Harrison Barnes is an effective two-way player. Draymond Green is a defensive connoisseur. But what if I told you that one trade almost prevented all of this from happening for Golden State? Let me take you back to the 2014 season. The Warriors lost in round one in seven games to the Los Angeles Clippers. And Golden State was good, but there was a belief that they were kind of stuck within the mold of the Western Conference, and they were desperate to try to improve, and a trade presented itself that Golden State almost pulled the trigger on, and it centered around Minnesota star Kevin Love, who had inserted himself as one of the best players in the league for having some insane numbers, like 25 points, 13 rebounds. However, as good as Kevin Love was, the team would go under 500, and uh, his teammates really couldn't pick up the slack. And as we know, he was traded to the Cleveland Cavaliers. But if this trade would have happened, the guys moving would have been Klay Thompson, who had not yet elevated himself into uh, potentially the best shooting guard in the league, Harrison Barnes, who I mentioned a second ago, can defend multiple positions, can hit the three ball, does all that stuff well, as well as David Lee, who I didn't feel like getting any footage of because, well, he's David Lee, but he was pretty all right at the time too. And as we know, of course, this move did not happen, but if it did, what would have happened? Well, immediately, Golden State would have been awesome on offense because Steph Curry and Kevin Love in the same starting lineup, I mean, it's probably fair to say they could have led the league in points scored and it would have been an entertaining show, and they might have even been a little bit better. However, like I mentioned earlier, Klay Thompson is a very good defensive player, and his replacement would have been Kevin Martin, who would have also been in the trade. Kevin Martin ain't playing much defense, man, let's be honest. And then Harrison Barnes, pretty damn good defensive player as well. But the worst part is, Draymond Green would have been on the bench because Kevin Love would have been starting a power forward. If it wasn't for David Lee getting hurt, Draymond Green would have never been a starter. And then Kevin Love's defense? Well, it can get pretty damn ugly. So I think if this move would have happened, Golden State would have actually become just another team in the Western Conference. Pretty damn good, but not good enough. Now what happens for Minnesota? David Lee at that time was still putting up some decent stats, so good for him. Klay Thompson with the green light being your number one option averages probably 25 points per game. And then Harrison Barnes with a larger role. That Minnesota team probably wins like 30-something games, which sounds good in theory, but it actually might end up being bad for them in the long run, and uh, we'll get more into that in a minute. But back to the actual trade for a second. As we know, Kevin Love was traded to the Cleveland Cavaliers in exchange for Andrew Wiggins. And Wiggins is a very athletic wing who has already shown some very good signs when it comes to scoring in the low post. He does have to improve, but the potential is definitely there. But if Kevin Love ends up in Golden State in this scenario, Wiggins never gets traded from the Cleveland Cavaliers. And based on these past two seasons, you could make the argument that Wiggins' athleticism, defense, and his speed would actually be better for the Cavaliers than what Kevin Love gives them, you know, in real life. And then, of course, LeBron James is still going to be LeBron James and be one of the best players in the league. Kyrie Irving is still going to put up over 20 points per game. I think the Cavs may have actually been better if this move did not happen. But now, let's put some numbers to the 2015 season if this move were to happen. I think Golden State probably wins about 52, 53 games, maybe gets the fourth seed, Draymond Green comes off the bench, and Harella Bob screams for him to be starting, but it never ends up happening because Kevin Love's on the team. James Harden leads the Houston Rockets to the number one seed in the Western Conference. Remember that season for him. And as a result, James Harden wins the MVP, which makes a lot of people happy because a lot of people feel he should have won it over Steph Curry anyway. And then Golden State meets Houston in the second round of the playoffs, and the Rockets probably win this series in about six games because Golden State just doesn't have enough defense and two-way players. As for the Eastern Conference, LeBron runs through them as you would expect, 
And so in the NBA Finals, we get the Houston Rockets and the Cleveland Cavaliers. Shout out to Dwight Howard. I managed to find a way to get him in the video. And I don't know how Wiggins would fare offensively as a rookie in this series, but defensively he would be great, you have to imagine. And James Harden would definitely give Cleveland a headache and not make it easy on him. But I don't think LeBron James is going to be losing to that Houston Rockets team. And so I think the Cleveland Cavaliers would have won the championship in 2015. So immediately LeBron prospers from not trading for Kevin Love. He gets finals MVP. Shout out to him. Shout out to Mozgov in the background. Now that was good, but this is when it gets really good. The NBA draft. The T-Wolves were terrible in 2015, so as a result, they drafted Carl Anthony Towns, the number one overall pick. Well, I think Klay Thompson, Harrison Barnes, and David Lee would make the T-Wolves too good. They would pick towards the bottom half of the lottery. They end up selecting Trey Lyles, who's not bad, but he's no transcendent player like Carl Anthony Towns. So who gets the number one overall pick, and who ends up with the best player in the NBA in three years? Shout out to you, Lakers fans. You got the next great NBA big man. Lakers were number two in that draft. They become number one now. D'Angelo Russell goes number two to the Philadelphia 76ers because there's reports the Sixers really wanted Russell, but they couldn't draft him in real life. And so we already see the effect that this move happening would have made. Carl Anthony Towns on the Lakers. Sixers get themselves a really good point guard in D'Angelo Russell. But hold on, there's a bit more. Jaleel Okafor is selected by the Knicks at number three. I know you see Przingis. Phil Jackson actually wanted Okafor. This is a real thing you can find on the internet. The Magic still select Mario Hazonia with their pick because they're not going to select Przingis because they already have Aaron Gordon at power forward, which means at number five, Boogie gets his ideal front court mate and Kristaps Przingis. Holy hell, that would have been magical to see. As for the 2016 season, even if the Warriors found an upgraded shooting guard, it's not going to be Klay Thompson. And even if they realized how good Draymond Green can be, he's still going to be playing behind Kevin Love, and you still got to deal with the fact that Kevin Love is pretty damn bad at defense. So I think the Warriors just get lost in the shuffle of the Western Conference. They can't beat San Antonio or OKC. And then in the Western Conference Finals, as this happened in real life, Kevin Durant, Russell Westbrook, and the Thunder run through the Spurs. Russell Westbrook wins MVP in the process, by the way. Could have been him or Durant. 2K chose Westbrook. It's whatever. It's fine. Then LeBron runs through the Eastern Conference once again. Sorry, Raptors. I keep picking you guys on that picture. I don't know why. And then the NBA Finals, we get OKC and the Cleveland Cavaliers. And Wiggins' second season, I guarantee you see... Quite a bit of improvement from him, just being able to speed the Cavaliers up. And I think Cleveland would definitely push the series to as far as it can possibly go, but I don't know if they could handle the Russell Westbrook-Kevin Durant show for a seven-game series. So I got a slide with OKC winning this one. 2016 champion Oklahoma City Thunder. So the effects of Kevin Love, if that trade would have happened actually pretty damn significant we have some future stars who end up in different situations we have the cavaliers being a bit more athletic we have the warriors being just a normal team in the western conference and i think okc reaps the benefits of it all to be honest so i think for the warriors ultimately it was a good thing that they decided to hold on to clay thompson and harrison barnes rather than uh, doing this move